Praise be to Allah, the Lord, guardian, cherisher, sustainer of all the worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, one and alone, and no partners has He. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Peace and blessings of God be upon him. And we include by reference what traditionally follows of the most excellent salutations to Prophet Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. We have been told in a hadith that is frequently repeated here, that one of the best utilities, one of the best assets for the human being is the human intellect. The human intellect has a very special place in the life of the human being it can be properly used, it can be misused, and it can be unused. And it makes a difference. We'd like to share an ayah from the Quran. And this ayah is revealed by Allah the Exalted, the All-Knowing, the cherisher and sustainer of the human being the one who selected the human being to be Khalifa out of all of the creation, Allah selected the human being to be Khalifa. And in Surah 17, Ayah 70, the English translation reads, we have honored the sons of Adam, provided them with transport on land and sea, given them for sustenance things good and pure and conferred on them special favors above a great part of our creation. And this ayah was quoted particularly to call attention to the part where Allah 
states that he has conferred on the human being special favors above a great part of the creation and a good part of that special favor is in the intellect. Creatures have intellect. Not just the human being. Creatures have intellect. Creatures <clears throat> make judgments. Creatures perceive and make judgments. You have seen, you and I, we've all seen animals other than human beings look at a situation and make a decision. We've seen them look around, decide where their opening is, look around and decide where a threat is, and make their decision. In the laboratory, the human scientists take various creatures and they put them in set up situations to observe repeatedly what they can perceive and how they react to what they perceive and they document it. And they do it with mice and they do it with monkeys and they even do it with insects. Allah describes in the Quran in some places human beings who operate solely on perception and he describes them as like unto lower level beings. Allah speaks of people who are operating as apes. Allah speaks of people who are operating as swine, operating as cattle, or operating <coughs> as a dog. Because the intellect is given to more potential than simple perception. Imagine this cell phone. If this cell phone was operated so as to take pictures, which people take pictures with their cell phone, but if the operator was only aware of the ability of this phone to simply take pictures, then a great part of its potential would, would be going unused. Because the cell phone can do more than take pictures, it can receive messages. But if a person is unaware and doesn't use it for receiving messages, it just takes pictures, it's being underutilized. So the human intellect is for more than just perceiving the situation. It's for more than just operating based on the eyes and the ears. We've seen dogs perk up their ears. We've seen them look at something and make their decision. But the human intellect is a perceptor and a receptor. It's for perceiving and it is for receiving. And when the human being simply operates on their own perception, but they exclude the special thing of the human being, which is a creation into the human being from Allah, which gives the human being the capacity to receive a message from Allah. The human being, when created, was given the capacity to respond to messages from the Creator. It's built in. But some live, some among human beings, live 
without using that part of their created potential. The chutzpah today is one of those chutzpahs where uh, the one who is preparing it realizes, I could start at this point, I could start at this point, in which, which way are we going to connect these ideas? And sometimes I ask the one who gives the chutzpah at the end, what was the title? And they say, hurrah, hurrah. Because it, it could be so many different titles, but the intended title of the day is Perceiver plus Receiver is the Makings of a Believer. The believer is one who has normal perception, but in addition has reception of a message from Allah which they receive and take seriously and they judge different from the person who judges simply by perception. Church people have a saying from their scriptures, something about walk by faith, not by sight, indicating that there is something besides sight to walk by. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah 5, talking about judgment, he has a, re a repeated phrase that occurs in Surah 5 three times. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, that's in there three times. In other words, people are supposed to judge by what Allah has said. That's why he said it. Not to be ignored and not for people to just go by basic, simple-minded perception. In Ayah 44, if any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than unbelievers. Yusuf Ali translation. Ayah 45. And if any fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than wrongdoers. And then Ayah 47. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. And Allah asks elsewhere in the Quran, what is with you? How do you judge? What is scripture for? What is revelation for if it is not to be used to improve and expand the judgment? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, وسلم, he emphasized this distinction, this expansion, this betterment, this movement for improvement when a person shifts from just being human to being human with revelation. He says, basically in the Quran, I'm a human just like you, but I have received revelation. That means he's basic human plus the word of God. Basic human without the word of God does not equal basic human plus the word of God. It's a formulaic difference because the word of God, we're told, if it was put in the scale, on one side of the scale and all the rest of creation on the other side, the word of God's side would be heavier. So I would be foolish to reduce myself to just going with my own perception when I have an opportunity to have my own perception 
plus reception of the word of God. So there is a phenomenon amongst human beings where we don't properly appreciate. In one ayah, which is Surah 36, Ayah 77, Allah asks, Is man then not aware that it is we who create him out of a mere drop of sperm, whereupon, lo, he shows himself endowed with the power to think and to argue? Um, on another part, I believe it's Surah 22, In one of the earlier ayats, my printout is cut off a little bit, but it's a single digit with a round bottom, so zero, I'm sorry, probably six or an eight. And yet among men, there is many a one that argues about God without having any knowledge of him, without any guidance, and without any light-giving revelation. And another ayah, Surah 22, ayah 3. And yet among men, there is many a one who argues about God without having any knowledge of him and follows every rebellious satanic force. Again, these are various translations. Now, Perception without revelation is a relatively low-level life. Even if a person has tons upon tons of university credentials. Allah is the Lord of the universe. There is no university on the planet Earth whereby the faculty knows more than Allah. The faculty is still doing research. Allah is not doing research. Allah is, is the creator of that which people research. Try to give another example. Most people, even if you're not a basketball fan, people know the names of the, 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 more, the more famous stars in professional basketball. Like LeBron James, for instance. As an example, about perception plus reception, perceiving plus receiving, Le, LeBron James, has demonstrated 3D perception, height, width, and depth. Not only putting the ball in the basket, passing the ball to a teammate, all of those things while running with either hand, despite the situation, he's demonstrated all that. Yet, when coach blows the whistle, and does like this, LeBron James is not too big to come. And what coach has to say, LeBron leans in and he listens. But some people won't let Allah tell them anything. LeBron's coach is Frank Vogel. I had to Google Frank Vogel. LeBron famous, his coach is basically unknown, but he listens to his coach. This is no parable for a lot. This is just talking about coachability. LeBron on his own is not as good as LeBron with coaching. 
So what about us? We, with our own perception, are not as good as we with our own perception plus guidance from Allah. I hope that makes sense. May Allah bless us to be a community of Muslims upholding the banner of Al-Islam as it was upheld by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by his companions Radiallahu Anhu Ajma'in. Amen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. There is an ayah in the Quran where Allah says, Ma indakum yanfadu wa ma indallahi ba'ah. What is with you will vanish, but what is with Allah will endure. We all have our perceptions that are with us. Our feelings and our ideas are very much with us. They're very close to us. <clears throat> but Allah's, that which is with Allah, which, of which he shares some with us, It stands the test of time and it has stood the test of time. I have not had a thought yet that has lasted 1400 years. Everything from me is all my perceptions are short term perceptions. I'm trying to use this device that I was referring to earlier, still have a master. I have my limited perception of how to work this thing. Anyhow, the main point is it's a sucker move. A sucker move to think that our perceptive ability, our navigation through life so far, exempts us from needing to add to ourselves the word of God as an, an addition in judgment, an additional tool in judgment. We just we cannot help using our perceptions, but there is no solid reason to limit ourselves to our perceptions alone. There is so much in what is unseen to us because of the limits of our perception, we are doing ourselves a disservice if we cut back on the wisdom we have access to by denying ourselves the readings of what Allah has revealed. I think it's time to say that because we're about a half a year away from the last Ramadan and another half year till the next Ramadan. And we have a repeated theme here. Learn to read what Allah has revealed. And we find when we read what Allah has revealed, we have additional benefit coming to us. Allah says, the month of Ramadan in which was sent down the Quran as a guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgment. So that's what we get during the month of Ramadan. And we know that kicked off, that was kicked off by the command to read. Let me go back to another thing about human beings and other forms of creation. Human beings and creation, we all have kinfolks. Roaches have relatives. Hogs have brothers and sisters. Mothers and fathers. 
cats and dogs and horses. They all have ways of raising their young and, and conducting their family life, but only the human beings use alphabets. Only the human beings. Allah taught man by the pen what he knew not. Allah does not teach horses by the pen. Cats and dogs, rats and hogs don't use printed words for helping each other. It's a human only thing. And when Allah kicked off Ramadan and the Quran with the command read, he is triggering a potential in us and in only us as human beings to expand to what we were made to be on the level that we were made to function on. We don't do horse life and fulfill our Khalifa role. We don't do roach, rat, elephant, rhinoceros life, which is not about reading. This Khalifa is for Allah's chosen creature. We would like to share some announcements. The 2020 list of eligible voters at Masjid al Mubanun has been posted. Please review the Masjid bylaws criteria posted outside the classroom door. If you feel your name has been omitted, please contact Sister Rosie Muhammad, the board treasurer. Now, this set of announcements is emailed to those who are on the email list, which is mam community affairs at gmail.com that's how you get on the list and you get the full deluxe announcement if you just wait for me to read it you get some of it this week we will have a virtual tiling via zoom which will be held this sunday october 18th at 1 15 p.m the link has been sent via email. Again, you have to register yourself with MAM Community Affairs. Dot MAM Community Affairs at gmail.com to get on the emailing list. Uh, I intend to do the Talim on any questions about today's Juma plus a topic an arrangement to remember. We have upcoming Masjid events. Ratification of the Imam will be the first Sunday of November. And the eligibility list is posted as we mentioned. There will be, beginning November 1st, response forms available for nominating people for the three upcoming board positions. The Community Affairs Committee is having arts in the parking lot, arts in the parking lot, this Saturday, tomorrow, October 17th, from noon to 3 p.m., a drive through art gallery with local artists, designers, engineers, Culinary arts, fish dinners, $10, with fried fish, spaghetti, coleslaw, green beans, red dessert, bottled water. By request of the board, the third quarter committee reports are due from those who are chairing committees. The Halal Food Pantry is the last Saturday of every month from noon till 3 p.m. Commit, continue to submit suggestions for Wednesday virtual Zoom classes to Brother Imam Wali Shaheed. Pick up your copy of the Muslim Journal. And we have community checkup calls every Thursday at 7 p.m. With a dial-in number. Again, you need to be on the list. 
for the community affairs announcement. Imam Wali Shaheed is also coordinating outreach for the now current and upcoming uh, elections, nationwide and state elections. So pardon me if I have left off part of the announcements that uh, I could have read, but we're trying to keep to a time schedule. And after the Juma prayer, Inshallah, we'll have an opportunity for accepting Islam for those who would like to give their testimony. May Allah bless us to be a community of Muslims upholding the banner of Al-Islam as it was upheld by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by his companions, Radiallahu Anhum Ajma'in. Amin. Atimah Salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya la salat, hayya la salat, hayya la salat. Oh, 
كوثر فسلي لي ربك وضحى مشاني تهوى وأبدار الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi And in an effort not to disturb the sunnah prayers that may be being offered, we have a brother who wants to take his kalima shahadatain today, and we want to take this opportunity to have Brother uh, Gerard Vaughn to come forward, if you will. And we will administer or give the community out of it. You can come this way, Oliver. I can hear you, Brother. So, Brother uh, Gerard, we met a few months ago. Yes, sir. And Alhamdulillah, you indicated at that time that you wanted to, that you had been introduced to Islam, that you studied it, but you hadn't fulfilled it and wanted to take the Kalima Shahad. Yes. So we are just asking, because we do things in Islam based upon knowledge and not just upon feeling. So have you had an opportunity to just really study something about Islam so you understand its precepts and concepts? Yes, sir. And you taking this Kalima Shahada of your own volition under no duress? No, sir. No, sir. All right, then, if you will, uh, if you will recite after me, we, we make the recitation first in the Arabic and then in the English. We began this with love. I shall do. Repeat after me. I shall do. I shall do. And la. And la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. I shall do. I shall do. Anna. Anna. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah. That's translation. Translated. I give open and sin I give open and sincere testimony. I give open and sincere testimony. That there is no deity. There is no deity. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And mm -hmm. I give open and I give open and sincere testimony. And sincere testimony. That Muhammad is his servant and messenger. That Muhammad is his servant. And we always say that once a person takes the Kalima Shahada, that that person is the, is the cleanest person in the room. 
So right now, Brother Je uh, Gerard Vaughn, he's the cleanest person in the room. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi uh, let's see. Go up to the treasure's office. And, yes, sir. Talk to Sister Rose. Yeah. Sister Rose, is she in the treasurer's office? Just go on over here. You can ask for Archie. Oh, you I, I hear it. You can. But, <laughs> no, no. I don't know if it did it do. He said that.